Now, for more on the Singles Day Shopping Festival, I'm joined by Brian Buckwald, live from New York. He's co-founder and CEO at Bermuda. Thank you for joining us. It's great to be here. So let's look at some of these numbers. $25 billion in sales from just Alibaba, and then JD.com also saw sales up 50%. What does all this momentum say about China's potential in consumption? Well, I, ultimately what it tells us about China's potential in consumption is that it is certainly the largest market in the world, and at this point, relatively limitless. Uh, a few years ago, uh, most economists were looking at China and, and forecasting a consumer slowdown. Uh, what we've seen is uh, continued momentum, continued growth, uh, in fact, continued acceleration in a number of sectors, including e-commerce. And the sky certainly was the limit in terms of purchases. We saw one item reportedly purchased on Singles Day, an Aston Martin racing yacht for 17 million yuan. That's about two and a half million dollars. And then you have people stocking up on everyday purchases like diapers and snacks. So when people splurge on Singles Day, does that tend to dampen retail sales for the rest of the year? Well, that, that is certainly a, an issue in China, like we see, uh, for instance, for Amazon Prime Day or, or Black Friday and Cyber Monday in the West. And, and the answer is, to a certain extent, yes. But 11.11 has taken on the singularity of purpose, where it's almost just a, a shopping bonanza, where consumers set aside money to get certain items um, at discounted prices, but it's also just the fun of being a part of it. Uh, what we have seen uh, is continued Chinese spend uh, through uh, different uh, retail channels, even after 11.11 throughout the holiday season. Now, we know that Alibaba has been promoting its new retail model. How did that fare during the Singles Day event? Well, from, from what we can see in the data today, and not all of this information has been parsed out, it performed phenomenally well, candidly. The, the, the retail model uh, that they put in place in, in terms of the, 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 um, the Tmall kiosks in different stores, um, the omni-channel model uh, using mobile is really the connecting point between offline and online, uh, it really is the future. And I think with this 11.11, we saw Alibaba bring the future much more into our, our reality. Now, it's interesting because when you look at this new retail model, a lot of people are wondering how revamping the industry via technology will catch on globally. What's your take on that? Well, one of the things that we talk about at Bomoda is looking to the east. And, and as it relates to technology and certainly commerce and social media, it's really about looking to China. Uh, what we see in Asia and, and, and right now in China is typically seen in the West two or three years later. So. A lot of what Alibaba is doing is going to be noted by the Amazons and the Ebays of the world. And I think we're going to see a lot of that technology make its way into uh, physical retail and, and certain uh, digital environments that these companies are creating here in the States and in the West as well. Now, when you look at the volume of sales, clearly no other shopping event in the world rivals Singles Day. But right. why has the overseas adoption not picked up as quickly? Well, part of this is really the, the nature of, of the Chinese digital ecosystem, which is behind the great firewall, uh, which is really built uniquely for a Chinese consumer mindset. We have seen growth, Rochelle, in Southeast Asia, for instance, where Alibaba and, and Chinese culture has a little bit stronger roots. Um, as it relates to the West, in order to get into single estate, you basically at this point have to know Chinese. You have to be able to uh, make it through an Alipay-like system or, or figure out how to use an, a, a credit card that's not normally used in China. There are still a number of user experience hurdles for Westerners to really pick up the holiday. Outside of the fact that unless you're in business or unless you're an investor in Alibaba, there's a good chance in the West you actually don't know that the holiday exists. So then in terms of boosting popularity overseas, what do you think might be the tipping point that really might get more people outside of China on board with this? So I, I think at the heart of it, it's going to be Alibaba or, or JD.com or Tencent's continued investment into Western platforms. The, the likelihood that Alibaba as, a, as, as, as Taobao or Tmall.com generates millions and millions of uniques in the West is probably unlikely. But if you look at their acquisitive nature, if you look at the investment that these firms have been making, you could certainly see them buying into large consumer properties in the West and then using 1111 as a bridge to uh, effectively bring Chinese goods, Chinese services to the West, but also bring more of those goods from the West back into China. So then if you're a foreign retailer, you're, you're seeing these cash registers ring up. What's your advice in terms of getting a piece of the pie when it comes to Singles Day? Well, well there's massive desire. And, and we have seen each year more and more Western retailers, Western brands, um, jumping into Singles Day. In fact, this year, um, I would say the majority of the clients that we have at Bomoda um, are actively engaged in the holiday. They want their peace, but they understand that that peace right now is coming out of the Chinese consumer, not out of the Western consumer.
All right. Well, thank you so much, Brian Buckwald, co-founder and CEO at Bermuda.